All right, so we're going to do a couple videos here real quick. Someone asked me a question I found intriguing, so we're going to do a little modeling while we go over that question. And then uh, the follow-up video to this one is going to be creating labels on your models. And that's going to be just kind of an introductory thing. But nonetheless, let's get started with this question. So the question goes like this. I was asked, uh, when I first got into subdivision, did I ever feel like I was going nowhere at times? Or it felt like it was getting easier. And the truth is that um, when I got started with subdivision, it wasn't too many tutorials, at least on it. There was poly count I would rely on a little bit. But um, that was pretty much it. Like there was no YouTube yet. Like it was like 2004 ish, maybe. I was trying to get my head wrapped around the idea of subdivision and how to use it. I had no idea. All right. And so uh, for many years, I would say, I just. It didn't, I it didn't, I couldn't figure it out, right? Like make things, I try to subdivide it and it just didn't work or didn't go well, or there was something that would happen, right? Probably like I couldn't make the shapes I wanted to make and get them to subdivide well. Um, but there's a little trick to this. There was a tutorial put out by, I think it was, it was either Pixar or someone on Polycount or something. But this tutorial, the only thing that drove home for me on it was that use quads and three edges to hold the shapes. That's it. That's all I took away from that tutorial. Everything else was like so hard to understand because it was not like live demo. It was like you had to read a book in order to start to understand things. And um, so it was frustrating to say the least to try to do anything in subdivision. So I found myself modeling, uh, modifying video games anyways. I found myself just straight modeling things out usually. Just, this is it, right? And just modeling. I learned subdivision by just practicing with these kinds of Boolean NGON models. Like, it wasn't a term back then, I don't think. It wasn't like you stacked a uh, hundred million different Booleans on top of each other. You just played around with shapes. And try to convert them into subdivision so did it ever feel like i was progressing at it to a degree i got pretty confident at it but i didn't know exactly how it worked or why it worked because i'd make something like this with booleans and then i need like a bevel here or something right and i don't want to bevel that whole edge i just want this side beveled right i want the other side to be sharp and so I'd run into all kinds of little issues all the time where like the bottom of it, it's like, what is going on here? I don't know what to do about this. Uh, so I would always drive on with that idea that you need the three edges, right? So I'd do bevels where I can to make three edges and um, just keep moving. It's going to get crazy and wild going through that process. Like I'd turn on subdivision and be like, oh my gosh, what, what is this? Okay it off <laughs> don't want to see this no more right um so very quickly i discovered that if you do some knife cuts or plane cuts i remember i was using max i wasn't using blender but i do some cut through the mesh like that you do a knife cut hit kca or whatever you do basically a plane cut i could start to isolate my mesh errors rather easily this way and sometimes you couldn't just cut through the plane because there's stuff in the way right so that was always an interesting aspect of it but i could i could add in a couple of edges and start to look less terrible so a lot of trial and error with this try to create three edges doing everything manually This is exactly how I learned, basically. And a lot of times I couldn't get away with three edges. For whatever reason, I would rely off um, doing a single edge, like a chamfer, right? Like this. And so I found myself using those quite a bit. But I never understood what I was doing. I just did it. That's the thing. Like, I'd go through, I'd start cutting it up, doing this. And when I found edges like this, uh, a lot of times I just ran edges out. 
Like I got a big end gun here. I got to convert it into quads. What's the easiest way to convert it to quads, right? Just cut edges. And um, I know these are going to go back here somehow, but I don't know what they're going to do or go or where or why. And so that was always the way subdivision was for me. I just never had the answers. I just, just kept pushing forward with the uh, modeling project. It was more about creating things and less about being like an expert topology person. I wanted to make things to bake. That's it. I wanted to modify video games. And so as I'd go through that process, you know, lots of things went wrong. I don't even know if I can replicate some of the things that would go wrong back then. Um, but I, I eventually found that I could just start cutting things up, getting them going in the right direction. And that's all that I needed to, to kind of push forward. And I would end up running all of my topology to a big ingon, usually on the ends. And um, that was it, right? So I'd start doing some things like this, perhaps. Like you see, it's getting stretched out. I'm like, that's not right. You know, I'll just add some loops in here. Let's see if that helps it, yeah. Okay, and then you end up with a lot of topology and you can run into more issues because of that. But the thing is, is that I just kept going. I never had confidence in it, like ever had confidence in it. This is just, it was just make stuff, hope it works, I guess, the best way of saying it. If I didn't know where it needed to go exactly, I would just cut it out a little bit and, because I know that might be right. But everything else I had no clue about. Okay, so when did I get confidence? That's the big one, right? Uh, I would say it was probably... I got my most confidence, I'd say, when Aramis started making uh, Max videos. No joke. Because a lot of the things he was doing like I had already discovered kind of on my own or through polycount or something else. And when I got started with all that, YouTube wasn't around, right? When I learned Max, I bought a book on it and that's, I just did the whole book all the way through to make like a, a character face and um, do some refraction rendering and just other random stuff. All the beginner stuff. Do a little bit of like displacement of terrain using terrain data or whatever but you know that book helped me out a lot with getting like some of the foundational pieces going but it didn't really explain like how to actually start creating things on your own especially the stuff i wanted to create because it was like max um, four or something they had like the uh, command module like one of the apollo command modules or whatever as a demo file and i loaded that thing up and i was just blown away by it i was like man this is the coolest thing ever i want to do hard surface stuff and um i want to do vehicles like that but there's like virtually no information on how to do those kinds of things you know so i'm trying to model the way i would have back in the day because <laughs> that's probably what i would have done and then I ended up with this error, right? And you're like, oh no, what do you got to do here now? Uh, something's wrong. So we need three edges. Let's start with that. Do the three edges across all of this because it's... Eventually I figured out that you got to do all of it. Maybe. Do the three edges. Boom. Right, but yeah, the reason is because you know now I could see. I was starting to watch videos on it. You got to remember, uh, I was out of, I was in and out of 3D too, so it wasn't like I was on YouTube every day watching uh, people making 3D models on YouTube. I don't even know if there was 3D modeling videos on YouTube, but I ended up. Um, just doing a lot of subdivision on my own at a certain point. Just kind of going through the throes of making weapon models or whatever. And I never, I was never confident in it. Didn't fully understand it. Didn't know why things broke or fall apart or 
stretched like this and um but i would just keep with that same idea use quads use three edges and try to try to um you know like put two and two together here like when you do these edges as loop cuts you can't have like these big elongated stretches like this you have to start finding ways to condense those or keep them from stretching out and so like this became natural here and um just doing things like that like if things wanted to work down into a point sometimes i would just merge them and uh, get rid of that and you see like i didn't know i was doing anything that was a reduction or anything i was just doing what i thought would make it look good so it's like trial and error for years and a little bit of confirmation from watching another 3d artist doing things that's really what kind of got me going i guess there's lots of tutorials that i've probably looked at on poly count too I, I can't even name all those where it's like you know make a cylinder for a, um, a pistol or whatever and they show like little basic cut guides and things like that so that was a big part of getting things kind of going in the right directions because you'd look at something like like this and you'd be like obviously this is wrong like they're not doing that or there's their weapon they had posted a picture of it so i need to change something on mine and then i try to mimic what they were doing and uh, yeah so that's the story I mean, that's the answers anyways i don't want to make this video too long but yeah so really feeling confident at what i was doing i would say i felt pretty confident in after about you know, got started in about 2002 playing with subdiv around 2004 i think and so about 2006 i would say i started feeling fairly confident but i didn't understand how it worked um, it wasn't until watching other people working on youtube and everything else that i started realizing like i was on the right path and it was just confirming that what i was figuring out on my own was more or less the correct way of doing things so truthfully being fully confident at it like now that i i think about subdivision i don't i don't think anything about it anymore right like it's like it's just a way of working that has everything to do with like the fundamentals of 3d modeling the topology right like yeah we could run all these edges down here and do this and trust me i did this stuff all the time but it doesn't mean it's good topo right necessarily and my edges are canted and all kinds of other nonsense but this is the exact throws i went through that's why i wanted to model a little while we talked about it a lot of times i'd be left with a face here a big end gone because i don't i wouldn't like try to start cutting them up like this right now um it would be so crazy complicated that it would drive me mad a little bit i was i was always thinking to myself like why is 3d modeling with uh subdivision so hard you know like why has nobody made a better way of 3d modeling than this right because this is terrible um and then as you start to understand it more it's like oh yeah this is this makes kind of sense you know it actually does and that's the weird part about it right so you just have to fix things move on and um pretty much that's it that's the name of the game so you make things you fix things and eventually you get it done at some point or another see like this here i would probably never think of doing something like that on that like it seems like it would chew away at it and it would break it and yeah it does until you add an extra holding edge in here right do that one all the way around probably 
but as a you know beginner version of myself i would never think about doing that triangle like that and then doing a bevel and pushing the triangle to the side right and i didn't bevel that apparently so we do that Let's dissolve those merge it symmetrize it Boom. right you can see that's all falling apart over here I can cut through there. I want some extra edges to hold everything in shape. I don't think it's a loop yet, so I'm just going to use a knife. But I didn't even know what a loop was. Like, a loop? What is that? How do you make a loop? Like, how do you purposefully make a loop? You know? So that it works the way you want it to. It would line up edges, though. I just didn't know. I just thought it was. I didn't even really think about it, I guess. It was just like, if I don't put these edges in here, the subdivision falls apart. So I'm putting these edges in here, right? And then I might get to a point where I can start to kind of consolidate things on the other end. I'll leave that one alone for a sec. Where's that one going? I just remember trying to fill these areas. It was like a nightmare. Somehow we almost got the right count here. That's awesome. You still do this, by the way. <laughs> like, this isn't... You're going to make Boolean ingon shapes, and you're still going to solve them. It's, like, the workflow hasn't changed. It's just I have a better understanding of, like, what the topology is doing now. That's So... The workflow is like virtually the same though as what I've always done, which is crazy. Now I just gotta figure out what to do with this edge, maybe. Once I realize you could take an edge like this and just send it back with a pole so you can kill it across symmetry. I did that a lot too. That was one of my go to's. Like I couldn't stop using that kill things off across symmetry huge huge thing back i got uh, stuck on things basically that's not correct by the way to always do that but, but it it does work so it's, it's interesting it's all about balance you know you're trying to create little squares basically everywhere Perfect little squares everywhere is an ideal model where they don't the um I wouldn't say that having a higher resolution in certain areas, like you can see these squares are gonna start becoming smaller. Um I wouldn't say that's necessarily wrong. Okay. It's not entirely wrong, anyways. It's not ideal, but there's times you want to fluctuate the resolution. Okay, so you see this one's now kind of looking like it could be reduced almost. So if we take that one out, we shift that one over there. You see, that solves a little bit of our problem there, huh? Yeah, so all in all, hey, look, I'm not an entirely self-made artist. There's tutorials I've followed. There's um, guys that have been 3D modeling for a long time that have put out tutorials over the years that I've also learned things from. And uh, they put slightly different kind of perspective on different workflows and techniques or whatever and so i'm gonna do something weird here i'm gonna press y rip it and i'm just gonna pull that up a tiny bit 
Oh, there was a little vertex in there. Okay. I used to do this one too. So I wanted to show you this. I would purposefully do that and then I would cut to the so I'd have quads, right? It's, and then merge it back together. So I'd get that little lip like that. But is that even needed? I kind of, but it, it should be a little higher, anyways. Anyways, so yeah, that's it for this video. We got the model done in the video, which is great. Yeah, instead of quad remeshing it. You could have probably quad remeshed this. It would have been fun. <laughs> Just so you know. Maybe. Depends on how quad remesher feels at the time, I think. But it's a little unpredictable. Just join that one for now. There we go. So, last but not least, let's do the debug. Under settings, I think, or something. Operations, polygon debug. Okay. This will show you your errors or non quads. You see, we got Ingon here still. We got that going. That's the hard ops add on, by the way, if you're curious. Yeah. So we got some stuff going on still. Needs to be um, worked out, possibly. There's one. I thought I fixed that over there, but I guess I did not, huh? You might want to turn that debug off. No operations. Always forget where it's at. Let's check this out. I'm going to dissolve that. No. This. Which one is am I, am I not selecting here? This one? This is all, but whatever that is. <laughs> back there. There's something crazy back there. Yeah, so we could probably get... We could definitely do a reduction of this one by doing the classic half inset 3 to 1. And then we wouldn't have to connect to that one at all, but... Definitely run it forward too. Run it to there for a sec. Trying to figure out what I got to do in here. I feel like I got to do another edge around like this. That'll create a triangle and if that does it creates a quad okay see boom there you go now we got to run another edge around to finish this model we're gonna try to finish the whole model that's the new goal before we end the video it's gonna end it just a second ago but these two can merge together right there okay GG twice hold old, you can slide them forward like that. But let's debug it again. Okay. Got some issues right here I didn't see. Triangle, easy. Get rid of it like that. GG twice. We had a um this isn't gonna be a problem either. Just merge it out to there. This is um, not really an issue. I just forgot to do it. I was hoping rotating that edge would just fix my problem there, but it did not. It's like it wants another edge going up, across, join. There's a good chance I messed something up by accident, but... Vertex done. Clean up with machine tools. Why not? And actually, you're sort of kind of done at this point. If you have issues like this, 
obviously. You got to go through and you got to fix them. Like we're going to have to move this all up there. And how do you do that in Blender, right? Like how do we fix that? Um, we could try Alt-R with Machine Tools. Or excuse me. Yeah, Machine Tools Deus Ex version. GG twice. GG twice. Some people were asking about that. Like what you could use that add-on for. That's You use it kind of sparingly, but when you need it, you really need it, you know. The whole edge uh, slide thing or whatever. Shade smooth and turn poly, poly debug off. Poly on debug. Okay. Yep, so there you go. We have it. No errors left. And it's done now for the most part. Could be balanced better, but for this video, it's good enough. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I'll check you out in the next one. Take care.